Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. It is a Friday edition, and we're at coffee cup number 10. Now, I used the Mustang cup yesterday, so why not use the Ford truck cup today? Yeah, that truck looks suspiciously like, just wrong color, the 1963 F100 that my dad had. So, yeah, we're Ford fans, as you can tell, and so occasionally you'll see those Ford coffee cups in my collection. We've made it through 10. How many do we have? Just stick around. We'll find out. Well, in the meantime, we are recording on Friday in which Hurricane Ian is hitting the South Carolina, North Carolina coast. We're already feeling some effects of that here. It'll be coming up through South Carolina, North Carolina as a tropical storm. And so we're battening down the hatches today to just hang out at home and uh, pack a few things, do some housework and stay inside. So Hope you're safe wherever you are. And if you're looking at this at a later date, then maybe you can look back and see what was happening on this particular date as we were leaving September going into October 2022. And this uh, record-setting hurricane hit Florida and then came into the Carolinas. Well, we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're in a beautiful passage of scripture that we need to look at today as we are enjoying the heart of the disciple. The Apostle Paul, as he's sharing his heart with the church here at Corinth about some things that are so important, so important to our own doctrine, our own basis in our faith. And he does this again as we open up chapter 4, beginning with verse 1, by saying, Therefore, since we have this ministry, because we were shown mercy, we do not give up. And instead, we have renounced shameful, secret things not walking in deceit or distorting God's message, but commending ourselves to every person's conscience in God's sight by an open display of the truth. Now, I love the way that Paul puts this because he makes it plain that he is out to share things openly. He doesn't have one little message for the elites in the closet and another message for the public. He says, I'm an open book, and I want to give this to you straight up. Nothing to hide here. Now, in commenting on this passage, Paul Hamar writes, the false teachers in the church at Corinth had stooped to low levels in their efforts to discredit Paul's ministry. Wow, things haven't changed, have they? Have you noticed if you happen to rub the wrong people the wrong way, they'll stop at nothing to discredit you. They'll call you names. They will try to discredit your own ministry, your life, destroy you, even send whatever authorities they have control over after you. So, you know, things haven't changed much. Sinful people still react in the same old vengeful ways. Well, he goes on to write that all that they had practiced, he, Paul, had renounced. These included the hidden, secret, shameful things. He detested the basic dishonesty which motivated them the craftiness, the readiness to do anything uh, without scruples. They, they used this, uh, these methods, rather. They used these, and it was like, he says, a stench in Paul's nostrils. His critics even handled the word of God deceitfully in a distorted manner. They adulterated it as the wine seller of the day who weakened his merchandise by diluting it with water. Now, by contrast, Paul openly proclaimed the truth of the gospel. He stated its concepts plainly with no intent or attempt to deceive or trick anyone. Paul, his ministerial critics who sought to draw disciples to themselves acted as if the end justifies the means. He simply relied on the manifestation of the truth to accomplish the task. He used nothing deceptive nor secretive. As he explained in his defense before Agrippa, this thing was not done in a corner. That's Acts 26, 26. Now, sincere ministers of the gospel have nothing to hide. They preach no esoteric truths understood only by the initiated, as Paul's Gnostic enemies claimed. When the high priest asked Jesus of his own teaching as if it were secretive, remember what Jesus said? He said, look, I spoke openly to the world. I even taught in the synagogues and in the temple wherever the Jews always res reside, and in secret have I said nothing. John 18, 20. 
Oh, Frank, listen, there's no need to keep secrets. We want you to know. If you're a minister, a teacher of the gospel, you don't want to hide things for a little elite club. Instead, you want it to be known far and wide that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the message of salvation. It is the good news. And we want every little bit of the good news to be shared. We want it to accomplish its purpose. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So says the word of God. So we've got to get the message out so that people will hear it and understand it. Now back to our passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We pick back up in verse 3 where Paul writes, But if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we are not proclaiming ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves because of Jesus. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, this beautiful passage of scripture is, is often perverted by some who would say, well, I just tells you, God must have decided a long time ago before he ever created any people, he was just going to blind the hearts of all these folks. So they couldn't understand, couldn't see, and couldn't come to him. Does that make any sense at all? Well, it doesn't in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said that people don't come to the light because they don't like it. They, in other words, they choose to stay in darkness. And when you do that, you're choosing to live behind the veil. Now, as we listen to the way Hamer describes this, he says, uh, commenting on verse four, the fault was in the fact that Satan, the God of this world, had blinded those who refused to accept Paul's message. The adversary is always ready to darken the minds of those who resist the gospel. Now, in his letter to the Ephesians, Paul wrote of people who have their understanding darkened through the blindness of their hearts. Ephesians 4, 18. However, they could not escape personal responsibility by blaming their sinful state on the devil. The apostle further described them as those who, being past feeling, have given, given themselves over to this wicked way of life. They would not see, therefore they could not see. Willful blindness became penal blindness. Thus, spiritual forces hindered those at Corinth from seeing the light of the gospel. They failed to recognize Jesus as the very image, the likeness, the exact representation of God. Because they refused, because they chose to live and walk in darkness, the darkness became even deeper. And, you know, that's the way it works. All of this is very progressive. Friends, don't dabble in the cults, don't dabble in the occult, don't dabble in the strange new age teachings and beliefs that may be out there that look very attractive on the surface. Because the more you dabble in darkness, the deeper you dive into it, the more likely it is you'll get so deep that you can't see your way out. Friends, instead, come to the light, live in the light, walk in the light as he is the light. And when you do that, not only, as John said in his first epistle, you, we not only have fellowship with one another, we have fellowship with God himself. Where does that light come from? It comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life when you allow Jesus to sit on the throne and be in control. And then you take the word of God, the precious Holy Scriptures, and you make them a part of your life, allowing the Holy Spirit to illuminate your heart and teach you word by word, as well as verse by verse through the scripture. That's why we do this each and every day, why we wake up in the word. So friends, join me each and every day with a coffee cup in hand or a bottle of juice or whatever you like to have. Get your water bottle out if you need to, but wake up with us and join in God's word, learning how to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we go, I want to say thank you to of our newer subscribers. Not everybody makes their subscriptions public, but thank you for letting me get over 300 YouTube followers. I don't know that we'll catch up with Rumble anytime soon, but God bless those of you who've joined in on YouTube. Thank you, Joel and Tyler, and of course, Courtney and Carson this week, some others. Not everyone makes their 
follow ship public on YouTube. But thanks for those who put us over 300 this week. Let's keep moving on. Let's keep sharing the word until Jesus comes. God bless you.